uh, to introduce uh, William Porter. Uh, I offered to write a description of intro, but for some reason I was overridden, and Kristen has very nicely given me a very impressive um, background introduction to him. So Bill Porter is currently serving as the superintendent of Matter Schools. He spent more than 30 years serving Northeast Ohio communities as an educator in the roles of assistant superintendent, director of K through eight education, principal, assistant principal, an English teacher, and a coach. Bill is highly involved in the prestigious nationwide League of Innovative Schools, and he earned the John Weiss Lake County Administrator of the Year Award, and he was his first ever recipient. Mr. Porter completed both his undergraduate work and master's degree at John Carroll University, and he earned his superintendent's license. He has lived in the Matter Schools District for 27 years with his wife, who is also an educator. And together they have raised a loving family with four daughters, Jackie, Nicole, Michelle, and Danielle. It is my honor to introduce you to Mr. Bill Porter. Good afternoon, and thank you for that warm welcome. Um, I would like to begin by thanking the chamber today, um, and specifically Chris Weber, and congratulations, Chris, I don't know where you went on your new appointment, so congratulations. I would like to thank, to thank all of the attendees this afternoon for being here, and from the mentor schools specifically, I would like to thank our board members for being here, our administrative team, our uh, teachers association, and most importantly, our students who are here in attendance in the middle of the room today. So thank you for being here. We appreciate it. Um, to recognize our Board of Education, so we have some new members, some returning members, I think um, important to mention. Uh, first, and I would like to introduce Ms. Mary Briner, who is our board president this year. Mary's been on the board a long time and continues to serve us well. Um, Tom Tuttle is here today, and Tom is our vice president this year and has been also on the board for a number of years. Uh, Jenny Gisling is, been, uh, is, is back on the board after a four-year term. She uh, earned her way back on with the election this past November. We're glad to have her. And then new to the board this year, uh, we have Ken Buckley, um, who is new to the board but not new to Mentor. Ken has been a longtime administrator and educator in our district and is coming back to serve again. And Deanne Roberts, who is a parent in our district, and if she looks familiar, it's because you've probably seen her affiliated with the band program, and has been one of their greatest supporters. So um, we, I thank the board for their support. Um, I am very, very honored to serve in the superintendent's role this year and next year. And one of the major initiatives that I've taken on this year is to tackle our strategic plan. And for our strategic plan, that's something we want to do that will give us three to five major goals in four different areas. And these three to five major goals will help to drive so many of the decisions that we're going to make over the next three to five years. It's key in our, in, in our strategic plan to include input from all of our stakeholders. And so we have many, many different representatives uh, working on the plan, about 80 in all, from all different walks connected uh, to, our, to our district. On the screen, you'll see the four task forces uh, that this is broken down into, and they are working toward goals with the, uh, the, the ultimate goal of trying to have their goals written with positive, measurable action steps by May of this coming school year, of this school year. So safety, education, resources, community partnerships. We're gonna look, and this, this, this will sort of be the springboard for so many of the comments I wanna make this afternoon. So we'll look at each one um, with a little more depth. First, our resources. It's critically important to maintain and continue. Uh, we have to be committed to being good stewards of taxpayer dollars. Um, we have to do that, however, by still making sure that we remain on target with our mission, which is providing the high quality education that we're accustomed to here in Mentor. And you've probably heard uh, a lot of the facilities news that's come out, and I do wanna spend a few minutes today talking about that, and that certainly falls under the resources category. And as you can imagine, 
while these are big changes, they're very, very necessary changes to remain responsible with the taxpayer dollars. As far as the facilities go, uh, you maybe have read about these or you've seen these on our website. Maybe you've even seen a video uh, or at least a headline about it, even as recently as today's News Herald. Um, it is going to start, the changes are going to be significant and they're going to start in the 18-19 school year. These changes are going to help position us very, very well going forward for many years. One thing that I think is worth noting about Mentor, and it's a lot of what drives our changes. If you look at the, the chart, you can see we were starting to approach in the mid-90s that 12,000 student mark. There's quite a lot of students at that time, and that's coming off of sort of the, the results of the baby boomers having, having children of their own and so forth. But over the course of the last few decades, you can see how the numbers have sort of steadily declined um, and that's something that we've had to make adjustments to uh, throughout the course of the last, you know, 16, 17 years in order to remain fiscally responsible, efficient in our district, and to continue the high quality education that's so important to us. Next year, we're going to you see about 7,500 students this year, about 7,350 students expected next year. There is a leveling that's beginning to happen in the district. We're still graduating classes that are in the 600s, but our last four or five kindergarten classes have been somewhere between 500 and 550 steadily. So I think that leveling is starting to kick in with some of our younger grades. As far as the changes, you can see from the six boxes above, there are a whole sequence of changes and depending on which community you may know better or be part of, um, one change, each, each change affects different parts of the community a little bit differently. Again, driven by the declining enrollment, one of the things that we've looked at that's a factor um, is the building utilization. And while we had one or two buildings that were a bit crowded um, and we had to account for that, several of our buildings were way under capacity. And it's not efficient to keep running those you know, in that same manner. Particularly that was notable at our middle schools that were running between about 50 and 65% capacity. So that, may, you know, that helped us get to a pretty fast conclusion about this is the time to move from three middle schools down to two. But we also recognize in doing so that we have an excellent building in Ridge Middle School that we have an opportunity to repurpose. So we looked at some of our elementary buildings during the process. And in that process, um, we, you know, we concluded, in fact, Brentmore and Garfield, it did make sense to discontinue using those buildings. And that's not to say those buildings haven't served wonderful purposes for tens of thousands of mentor students over the years. But looking at the proximity of Brentmore in particular to Ridge, and looking at sort of the age and the layout of Garfield and, and some of the room sizes there, those buildings among other factors, it did make sense for those two buildings to close um, along the way. Also one of the things, and you can see it um, if you've had any chance to study the elementary map uh, that came out that's new, our boundary readjustment, this was also the time to address that head on. And to redraw these boundaries, we were able to create more reasonable distances for everybody. Now there are circumstances where there are people who may be three or four minutes away from their school now that may have a 10 minute drive to their new school, but we really wanted to avoid that full across town kind of commute for any parents or any students involved. So the boundaries, as much as possible, we try to make the new boundaries make sense. It also provides for us balance and appropriate capacities at all of our you know, buildings going forward. And that's important, even capacities where we could, we can withstand a little bit of growth if there are still some developments that are going in in some of our, you know, in some areas of our community. As you know from the map, the south end of the district is more affected, and the meetings the past two weeks, um, we've had lots of meetings these last two weeks with affected staffs and affected parents um, from these zones, and those have gone very, very well. We've addressed concerns, we've answered questions, we've tried to provide as much information as possible. And as far as the middle schools go, with the three middle schools moving into two, um, this is a little bit easier to follow um, logistically, but basically any students in the middle school who are out of that Brentmore zone are going to 
go into, be assigned to the Memorial Middle School, and any students out of the Bellflower Zone that would have previously gone to Ridge will now go to Shore Middle School. So that was pretty much a clean break. There are a few exceptions for a few neighborhoods and a few situations that we wanted to account for. Again, to bring sensible and reasonable geography to the picture as well as balances across our student bodies. Um, really, if you look at the financial impact, and this is something we have to keep an eye on, it almost, you can almost look at it in four different steps. It's closing one elementary, it's closing a second elementary, it's closing the middle school as we know it as a middle school, and then it's reopening that same middle school building as an elementary. You can see the cost savings from the first three, you can see the amount, the cost added back in on the fourth step, projected over one year with some other variable costs, over $1 million savings in just the first year alone for our district. And as you may know, over, you know, in school budgets, we look at things in five-year forecasts. That's over $7 million of projected savings for us, which is not insignificant. Along with that fiscal prudence that we're trying to remain aware of, we're very, very proud to talk about a perfect audit that was just awarded to us this past week. It is our eighth, our district's eighth straight perfect audit. And, you know, Mr. Dan Wilson and the treasurer's office has sort of led the charge, but it's also sort of a group effort. And I think it goes to show our transparency and our accountability with the taxpayer's money. At this time, we're gonna hear from Auditor Yost, who was here last week. The fact of the matter is, only about 5% of the entities that we audit earn the auditor's award with distinction. Um, so, uh, to put it in education speak, uh, y'all are performing at the 95th percentile uh, when it comes to your, your financial uh, bookkeeping. Obviously, we're very, very proud of that. But the reason we exist is for education, and this is one of our strategic planning task force areas. Um, if you followed Mentor at all in recent years, uh, you know about, you know, I, we've become famous for our innovative instructional practices, and we could talk for hours about that. But with the limited time today, I did want to at least spend a little bit of time highlighting a few of our programs. First, with regard to our STEM curriculum, uh, and STEM, as many of you know, stands for science, technology, engineering, and math. For the first time this year, we've been able to expand it to a K through 12 by adding STEM programming to our elementary levels. Um, there's absolute for all of our students involved in STEM education, you can see the progress happening in critical thinking and collaboration and problem solving. And being, you know, those of you in the business world absolutely know those are the things that you're asking for from our graduates. And we're starting it early and often now. Um, the th key thing that we've also seen is students are starting to persevere and work through their challenges. It's not whether you just have it right or wrong. They're running into a lot of challenges through the STEM education, and sometimes they fail along the way, but they're finding ways to get those problems solved, and they're working through that. So, you know, the endurance is, is forming. The grit, the determination, the perseverance. That's critically important for our students to develop along the way. And they certainly enjoy more and more hands-on learning going along with that. Let's hear about this. My favorite part of STEM is that you can be creative and there's not many rules of what you can do. One of the projects that we did was we coded a video game and that was probably one of my most favorite ones because we made, it, um, made the alien catch the monster in its mouth and it was really funny. We use more technology and it's not just building, there's more like science involved with it, so it's more like hands-on learning. I think if you talk to a lot of our students around the district, younger, older, they would echo a lot of the same sentiments that, with that. We're also very, very proud of our career tech work and we continue to expand. There are 17 course offerings just this year alone and for so many of our students this becomes potentially a pathway for their first real world experiences with certain areas. Um, this absolutely fits our goal of preparedness and readiness, whether our students when they graduate are gonna go to college or directly into the workforce or serve proudly in our military. We want our students 
to, to pick one of those three areas and to follow a pathway that makes sense. And career tech has helped that along so much. It's uh, an interesting note, 26% of our juniors and seniors at Mentor participate in a career tech program currently. I think it's also important to talk a little bit about at the younger levels, responsive classroom, because this goes again hand in hand with what's needed in business. Business understands the power of relationships. In fact, that's why so many of you are probably here today, because of some of the relationships that you formed. The same holds true for learning in classrooms. The academic success is greater when we tie that to social emotional learning and responsive classroom, which all of our teachers are trained in, is research based. And just as a, a slice of this, it starts with a morning meeting each day, but there are different focal points throughout the course of the year. And it, this does help to create safe and uplifting and engaged learners for all of the academic content that's to come. Let's uh, take a look at this video clip. All right, here we go. Two, four, six, eight. Who do we appreciate? Haley, Haley, yay, Haley. Two, four, six, eight. Who do we appreciate? Chanel, Chanel, yay, Chanel. You've got the hang of that, I think. Um, also, it's important we want to talk a little bit about the ABCs that Mentor Schools has been uh, talking about in, in the last couple of years. Stands for adapting, balancing, collaborating. These are key words that sort of guide our work in the district on the instructional side. And under that instructional umbrella, our work, quite frankly, has become the model for not only schools, school districts in the area, but around the state and even on the national level as well. Um, in, here in Mentor Schools, we have uh, had hundreds, if not thousands of visitors over the past several years to come and take a look at what we're doing instructionally, and we're very proud of that. Um, one big set of visitors last year came during the League of Innovative Schools visit uh, where we had the Mentor Rocks conference going on and you can see some video clips from this up there but we hosted superintendents from the 93 most innovative districts in the nation as well as executives from around the country who lead a lot of the technology corporations and they came to Mentor to see what was going on. What I was so proud of, of is they got into, in one respect or another, all of our buildings, and in all of our buildings, there were unique and innovative things happening on the instructional side. And so this is just another example of how our collaboration extends beyond the boundaries of Just Mentor. As we zero back in on the strategic plan for a moment, safety is the most important thing we have, because without the safety, nothing else that we do matters. And we have one of our task forces contains numerous key stakeholders from around the region who are helping us to put our plan together. And we're really fortunate to have so many local agencies and experts from the field. Very specifically, we have a special relationship I wanna mention this afternoon with our own mentor and mentor on the lake, police and fire departments. I do think I saw in the audience, Chief Knight and Chief Searles, if you would stand, we are so grateful for your partnership. Over, over the years, the departments have been so instrumental in the programming, the problem solving, and the communicating, uh, and have been real partners with us along the way. We value this relationship. It's important we know what each other is thinking at all times with regard to safety. Not only is the physical safety important, though, we have to pay attention as well to the social and emotional safety. And a lot of that happens through different special programming that we offer. A lot of you have probably heard of Rachel's Challenge, which is named after the first victim of the Columbine shooting. Um, and that helps us to foster in the district a culture of kindness, particularly. We have focused on our middle school buildings and our, and our high school. But even for the first time this year, we introduced Rachel's Challenge at the elementary level, and we're piloting that right now. Um, the Stick Together program has mentor high school students presenting kindness messages to younger students. Um, the One Book, One School uh, theme has caught on, and so many of our schools are doing that. And just this year, the middle schools tackled the book Wonder with the theme of choosing kindness. And we're going to hear here in a second from one of the guest speakers for the book Wonder, Sam Drazen, who helped with the One Book, One School initiatives when students read the book Wonder. I hope that 
what I can share about my personal experience, um, living with Trichicon syndrome can help kids not only better visualize Augie in the book, but help them reflect on their own interactions with peers and their community um, and really be the best people that they can be, the kindest people they can be, and most inclusive. So that's an important message, but not so uplifting. Unfortunately, um, we too are paying attention, like so many of you, to the opiate epidemic that is out there. And we've worked with our safety forces and we've worked with our local agencies. This has been on our radar. And unfortunately, so many of our own students and their families have been affected by this. Uh, that goes without exception. Every single school has been affected by some students' families involved in the situation. Um, I will say, and we're very proud of this, the Lake County Adams Board, who's done a lot of work with us on this crisis, has mentioned that as educators, as school districts, we're one of the leaders in the region as far as sort of taking the lead on what we need to do as a district to tackle this. Um, but it's not, as you know, it's not any one of us alone. It's really a community effort, and we're proud to be part of that, as difficult as it is. We are gonna continue. Last year, we offered two big community events um, during the school year, this year we're going to plan another one for the spring because we want to make sure that we're doing our part um, for, this, for this crisis. The community partnerships is the fourth strategic plan area, the task force that we formed, and there's really, really power of community in the work that we do. We have so many valuable resources, so many of you are among them. We cannot do it alone. It goes back to that adage, it takes a village. Um, and we're just very appreciative of all the relationships and the people out there who have helped us through the years and continue to help us. One of those tremendous partners has been Lake Health. Um, and you drove past the new building, um, just opened here in the beginning of January. And I know right now it's known for its pool, um, but we are also, as a school district, we've partnered with them to build internship opportunities for juniors and seniors at our high school who will be able to shadow professionals in all sorts of different medical fields right here connected to our own campus. Um, there are also gonna be health benefits for our employees and that helps as a way to contain health care costs. And certainly as you can see it up there, the swimmers. Um, our swim program, instead of going a half an hour to the east out to Spire or half an hour to the west to downtown Cleveland to Cleveland State, our swimmers for the first time ever can practice and even have some home swim meets starting next year um, right here at, at, you know, in the facility next door. And so what a, what a huge asset that is for us. There are 80 or 90 swimmers in the middle school and high school pro programs combined. And uh, what a, you know, besides having it right here, it saves them a lot of travel time and saves us costs. So we're very, very grateful for that partnership. Let's hear for a moment from one of our swimmers who's enjoying the new facility. It's great that we have this partnership with Lake Health because my first three years on the swim team we went out to Spire every day and we didn't get home until almost 8 o'clock and it was really hard to keep up with my workload being an honors and CCP student. Um, it was so hard to get all my homework done and practice every day. So now that we're here at the new pool we get home almost two hours earlier than we used to and it's so much greater. It allows for us to focus so much more on our training and then also be able to balance the academic aspect of school. And it's just a, a great experience. I enjoy it a lot. Already in a short time, it's benefiting so many students. Um, another great partner of ours I want to mention today, and, and, and Cheryl kicked us off a few minutes ago, and I appreciate that. And I see so many of, of uh, the folks from the Mentor Public Library we, are, we have been planning for now several months ways to partner with them in extending our hours of keeping our hub open. Our hub is our current media center at the high school that was redone a couple of years ago. And to partner with the public library and find ways to use that to benefit both the schools and the community is our goal. Um, among things to take advantage of would be the green screen video production room, the maker space uh, with the 3D digital printers, Flexible spaces that can be used anytime for learning or collaborating experiences. And again, we, we don't want this just for our own students to benefit outside of the regular school hours. But if community members of all ages with different interests um, can use the hub in different ways, we want to expand that possibility with the help of the library. 
Um, and so the programming will be geared to appeal to many different groups. Tomorrow is one of a, sort of our pilot kickoff events. I wanted to mention, put a plug in. So Wednesday, January 24th from 3 to 8 p.m., uh, we will get people connected to resources and technology. There's a schedule of activities. So hopefully you've seen that advertised a little bit out there. We want to remind you that's just ahead of us tomorrow. Um, we hope you stop by to check that out. And we're going to continue future planning with the public library in hopes of growing this out. Business Advisory Council, volunteers from business community who regularly give their time and efforts, critically important to our school. And their work ranges from the, really the career expos that you've heard about to building speakers bureaus and much more. This year they have a fundraiser I want to mention, which will be a week-long book drive over at Barnes and Nobles. Proceeds will benefit directly uh, mentor high school students. So please keep your eyes open for that, but we appreciate the business council. Want to put a shout out very quickly for Feed Lake County in the spirit of giving back. There are so many causes that our students take on. This is one of them. Um, students are here today to partner with you to collect food for neighbors in need. Um, if you are interested in having a box or a collection process at your business or agency, please see one of the students at the conclusion of the event today. And next week is the official kickoff to Mentor High School's campaign. Want to mention community movie night. Um, and movie nights are always put on for a good cause. Uh, the next one I want to mention, February 16th at the Fine Arts Center. We're featuring, actually, we just mentioned it a few minutes ago, the movie Wonder. And so that message of kindness will be hammered home again. And we will also be collecting food items um, optionally for anyone that wants to bring along. So again, for a good cause. And even the concessions will be geared toward Relay for Life uh, with the Cancer Society. So um, that's something to put on your calendar. The main thing I want to do before I leave you today is, is talk just for a couple minutes about celebrating our students. And we're very grateful to have at least six of our students here with us today. Um, one way our students can celebrate is, was down in Columbus earlier this year, we had not one, not two, but three different groups of students who were showcased at the Ohio School Boards Association annual conference. And at that showcase, where there are many board members and central office administrators from around the state, mentor programs were on display. We're very, very proud of that. One program came out of Sterling Morton School. It, was, it uh, highlighted innovative art instruction. Another program out of Brentmore Elementary uh, highlighted interactive tech integration for our health classes. And Mentor High School's Gen Yes program was featured as well. And those are the students in the hub each day. They have a different group of students each period who are helping to maintain and fix the technology there. And they're building some tremendous skills that they're going to need for the remainder of their lives. So Gen Yes was featured down there. I also want to talk for a moment about the Fighting Cardinal Marching Band. And they're near and dear to our hearts. This year, again, they, got the, um, they qualified for state competition and got the highest ratings possible in the state. Over 260 students strong. And I have to tell you, having, you know, I watched them out my office window during the course of the summer and fall in particular. Their, their success doesn't happen by accident. It's hours and hours of hard work, summertime, camps. Uh, they put in a lot, and they're a great source of pride for our community. The parent support for the marching band is amazing. And, they, and it, the results are they sound amazing. So we're very, very proud of what they've accomplished again this year. Also want to mention Kristen Buse um, and having the perfect ACT score. This doesn't happen every year, but we've had a few before, but when it happens, we need to mention it. Um, perfect score is 36, and less than one-tenth of one percent of students nationally, and there are over a million who take the ACT, um, can achieve that score. So we're very proud of Kristen. And the other thing, besides Kristen, more and more of our own students have been achieving at very, very high levels on this test. And that's one of those sort of benchmarks that's been in place for a long time. It has stood the test of time. So when we know our students are doing well with ACT, that uh, gives us a, another thing to be proud of. Mentor High School Science Olympiad. The celebration you see on the screen is because they were, the, for the first time ever, state champs um, in the state of Ohio. 
They have been for quite some time perennial state powerhouses, so it was just a matter of time before it would happen, but this was their year. Um, this too has had great support from parents and families, so many are involved in coaching roles and support roles. The other thing too is they have a great feeder system. Our three middle schools at their level all made it to states at the middle school level this past year. Um, so let's hear very briefly from Mentor High School coach Tom Ramsey, who's standing with coach Sean Langdon. I got emotional, and I got emotional about the fact that the kids we couldn't put on the team were standing by the team and helping us get there. Uh, Thomas Cromus and uh, Megan Rumpel uh, coached experimental design for us, and we basically threw together three kids that had not worked together, and over three weeks, they coached them up to where they came in first in the state in that event. So that was just marvelous. What a great job by, by that program. And then nothing gets our community revved up more, particularly in the fall. If our football team does well, let's take a look at some of the electricity here in the buildings that we saw this past fall. So these are scenes uh, from both the clap out and as our players went back to their old schools, their old elementary schools, their old middle schools, walk through, the energy was over the top. You also see some footage from a pep assembly at Mentor High School. Uh, we we're very, very proud of being state runners up this year. And um, while I know we wanted to capture that championship, Coach Triv and the other coaches and the players did an outstanding job of representing us, not only on the field, but off the field as well throughout the course of the season. Coach, I thought I saw you. I hope you're still here. If you'd stand up, please. Another great representation of our schools. I want to thank you for being here today at this luncheon. We are so proud of what we've accomplished, and we're going to continue hard uh, we're going to continue to work hard to maintain that pride. I wish I could have shared more because there's a lot more I could have. Um, I want to thank the Chamber again for having us today. And I would invite you to stay connected through our communications channels. That includes our website, the YouTube channel, social media, and many other ways. Um, so if you have any questions uh, after today's luncheon, there are, you know, there are some board members here. We have our central office team is up here to answer anything that you may be curious about, but we really appreciate the opportunity to share all the good things happening. So thank you.